Hello, I'm Robert, and this time I'm going to talk some more about some of the many rhythms you can make in Bart's metronome. And here, let's start talking about the way you can combine time signatures together. So if you go into rhythm, and then combine more rhythms and time signatures, this is where you can do it. So, uh, in, in one of the other videos, I already talked about how you can do a sequence of rhythms one after another. Well, this is another way of doing it. Uh, there are several ways of doing this in Bart's metronome depending on what you're trying to do. So here we've got, we've got say, let's put say two or four in the first, first, then combine them one after another as one after another, you choose that there, and then add a second measure, and let's make that with say three or, three or four. And you can see up here how it's made it into music notation, and then there it is as a rhythm, if you play it, then it's like that. And so, so that's an additive rhythm. And so some people really get into these, some styles of music, you need lots and lots of these strung after each other and want them all in one go as a single measure like that. It's called, it's sometimes called a hyper measure where you have a one big measure made out of lots of smaller measures and, and they kind of make it up. So if you want to, and you keep going to more and to more, you can combine eight of those rhythms together, you can combine 16 of those rhythms together and then you can actually combine another 18 all together to a total of 34 if, if that's what what you're really into so that's more for the more likely to want to do that with the additive rhythms than with the polyrhythms so that's the other thing so if we go back to these examples and these are the presets so that's three three plus two plus three you can see that down there now the, the other thing you might want to do are polyrhythms and there you would choose like that so if we had say that's three plus four down there and now if we combine them together as as a polyrhythm then the way that works you may well you may well know that how it, how it works with polyrhythms that uh, that the, the the measures are stretched so you've got three four and you've got four four, but the three four is stretched to take the same amount of time as the four over four. And so that's how polyrhythms work. All the beats are stretched. Now, some of you may very well know, uh, use the word polyrhythm in a different way from the way it's used in Bart's metronome. So I'll just briefly say a little bit about that. So the way I'm using it in Bart's metronome is it's the way that it's used mainly by classical musicians. And the po so polyrhythms then are like that. Additive rhythms, well, everyone agrees on that, I think. And then you have the polymeters, where with a polymeter, then it's you have the they're both the same beat size. Then beats are the same in all the parts. So this is best. So pol for polymeters, I recommend that you choose conducting patterns, and then. This is not just ordinary conducting, that's the ordinary conducting preset, but you also have just left to right, which works better for the polymeters probably. You can choose to show the conducting patterns for all parts, that's all except the measure beats, and now you can see the two, the two polymeters next to each other, so I recommend that preset. That is your preset for polymeters. It's the, I think it's probably the best way to display them. And then you can set them play. And then this maybe gives you a better idea of what's going on, do you see? And the rhythms just come together every so often. But the measures are different sizes, the beats are the same and the measures are different. So in polymeters the beats are the same and the measures are different. In polyrhythms the measures are the same and the beats are different. And the beats are stretched. Now, so the, the confusing thing is that, uh, that in some styles of music they refer to this as polymeter, the polymeters as polyrhythms. And then to make it even more confusing, in scholarly works about music, they very often use the word polymeter to, as a, a kind of umbrella term for both polyrhythms and polymeters, as, as is more normally understood. And they'll talk about this as being a measure as a beat-preserving polymeter and the polyrhythms as being a measure-preserving polymeter. So, you know, what, what can you do in a situation like that? I mean, you just have to choose one of those various ways of using the words and go with it. 
So that's what I've done. And so I've chosen the, I've just chosen the way it's used in classical music, mainly because it, it gives you a very easy way of distinguishing, because you can just say, you've got one word for the beat preserving as the polymeters, and the other one is called polyrhythms. And, and, and whereas the, the, the other musicians tend to call it, either call everything polyrhythm or call everything a polymeter, depending whether you're a scholar or a somewhat more popular approach to music. And both of those are rather confusing. So I've chosen the Western classical music approach to, that, to those names. So that's the polymeter. And, and so for the, uh, and just something to mention while we're here in this, in this window. So you've got the 3D bounce. Yes, you go to the win drop menu is what we have to do on the Mac. I'm just going to show you that sometimes you find it a little bit narrow and so you can go that, you can change the horizontal scale, say 130 if you want it wider or 110. That's worth knowing about. And you can see how that changes. This change, yeah, I think for this one, say 130 is probably about right. It, it does a good good guess at it, but you might find sometimes it's a little bit. And then for the polymeters, you want, might want them staggered. I think you would very probably want them separate or staggered. This puts them all next to each other, which for polymeters is really rather confusing, I think. You may be able to go with that, but I think that's somewhat more. So the different ways of presenting things work better with different rhythms. So that's definitely what I recommend for polymeters. The bounce conducting patterns are left to right and then split like that. Whereas if you're doing a polyrhythm, then for those, well, you can do it like that, but many people also like the bounce inside the, uh, bounce inside the oval for polyrhythms, which can either do all in one go like that. It just depends, you know, different people. Uh, you might find that it's, it's better like that. Let's uh, hide the measure beat there. So you might well prefer that that kind of way of looking at things for the for the uh, polyrhythms. I just changed the first part because that's got a blue background. So uh, when I was talking a little while back in one of the other videos about saving as projects, then you might well want to save one project for the polyrhythms with this style of way of presenting it, another project for the polymeters with the other style. And if you go and look down here, if you've got all these pro presets and these have these have everything set up to work for the different kinds of rhythms. So sometimes they have different ways of presenting it as the preset. These also have, like, if it's the additive rhythms, well, if you're adding lots of rhythms one after another to make a long hypermeasure, then mainly what you want in the main window, well, let's just go and have a look at it. So if you go to add, and you, if you change, you see you get this thing, it says resets. Generally, you, you want to choose resets because that sets it all up nicely. But do be aware that, of course, means you're going to lose the rhythm that you're working with just now. So that's what this long complicated message is about. So normally you just choose resets, but you could, you could save it as a project first if you, if you want to save what you were doing. So when, when it all settles down, then here we are, and, and it's left, let's do left to right. So, so that's the, so now you've just got lots and lots of checkboxes there. So you can easily add add new rhythms and set the numbers for each one. So that's the reason reason, and then you can use these presets as well. So that's the reason that we have all these different presets down there. And then if you go to, for instance, the uh, drum and dance, then that has um, a music notation in the main window, and then. You, you go here if you want to see it with more see it with more details and by the way you can save your own music notation rhythms here if you're really into the music notation you'll probably use drum and if you're mainly using music notation this is maybe where you're going to go either that or if you're into Latin American music you can go there or Flamenco go there and then you you can just enter your rhythm in music notation and then if you're really keen, you can save it, and then you can make a, a drop list of rhythms there. I don't think we've saved anything there yet. Save as Mortz. Mm. 
just sort of got something there. And now if I can show that in the main window, it goes up there in the place of, ah, did I save it? I thought I, I thought I was sure I had saved it. Let's try again. Oops. Show in main window. Ah, it found it now. I think you just had to select it from there before it found it in the main window. I, I'll apply for a little look and see if I can find out why that happened. Anyway, so so you can save your rhythms there and you can pop them up in the main window in place of, of this drop list if you want to. Let's un unselect that and then that returns that to the to the preset drop list. And then in the preset drop list there are there's some rhythms. I want to show you the rhythm phrasing example. So you can make polyrhythms and polymeters here as well. So if you go and look, uh, if you choose a polyrhythm example, and uh, if you move that polyrhythm anyway thing from it, then you have this thing that comes down here where you can choose how you want to do it. And so you can have it play as polyrhythm. So there it is being played as a polyrhythm. You can play it as a polymeter. And that means that the beats are the same size and the measures differ in size. Or you can ex you can you can uh, pack it out with extra notes or extend the last beat. So you've got this polyrhythm and polymeter option here as well. And then you also have the uh, this rhythm phasing. Now this rhythm phasing, you can the easiest way to do rhythm phasing. This is Steve Reich type rhythm phasing. So this is again I think probably easiest to understand see in the three D bounce window. It's just a little bit clearer. So is this is the first example, isn't it? Which is the simpler one. It just varies by one hundred and one percent. So if you just watch, you'll see that they start almost together. That's up here. Let's take a little bit slower. And it's gradually going in and out of phase with each other. So that's rhythm phasing. That's how you do that. So if you follow that example, and the, if you go to the more version of this, there's, there's, there's more options and details to do with rhythm phasing. And then there's also... Uh, You've also got these the syncopated African polyrhythms. I can let's let's do that one. Why not? So the uh, are we showing the measure beat? No, uh, oh, it's, yes, it's because they all aren't out of sync with each other. Yes, yes. So so these are these syncopated polyrhythms. I thought those were measure beats, but not. So this is this is one where where you don't have a single measure beat, but the the actual it's polyrhythmic. But they also the various rhythms also go they don't coincide on the measure beat. So they're kind of syncopated. So this is the uh, the African style polyrhythms. This is a, a method a way of playing polyrhythms that's common in in Africa. And there's a whole window that you can use to make those. Uh, there you are. Rhythm. So this gives you many more you many more ways of making these these uh, more ways of making because possible yes the African style polyrhythms and then you've got the Euclidean rhythms and you can make polyrhythmic Euclidean rhythms so these Euclidean rhythms now these these are this was an idea it sounds terribly mathematical and it is in a way but it's it's really quite a simple idea so the uh, it's the idea for instance this is the Tresillo rhythm which is a very common rhythm it occurs in many countries worldwide and this you can if you analyze it it consists of eight eight beats and then out of that you you choose three of them as equally spaced as possible so you can't choose them three beats equally spaced because there's eight divided by three to just doesn't divide into evenly so some will be three beats and some will be two beats that's the tracillo Up. 
So, the, uh, so this is discovery that uh, an academic made uh, just a, a decade or so ago. That you see these huge number of rhythms there, then they are all follow that very similar pattern. That you take, uh, and, and you take these say nine out of sixteen or five out of thirteen, seven out of twelve. Just to choose two numbers, and then you space them as evenly as possible. And so that's why it sort of alternates two one two two. It's not two two two. It's not two two one one one. But you space them out as evenly as possible all the way through. And then you end up getting these these rhythms that are very common in world music. You end he generated all those rhythms of, of world music using his method. These are examples from his paper. So this has now been taken up by various rhythm programs nowadays. So that's included there. Now. Another thing here are these rhythm cycles. So this is a way of making. Now this is this is kind of in, quite interesting because it brings a different way of displaying the rhythms down there. So this is if you make a cycle of rhythms. Now we actually do have a pro preset set up for that. Let's just go to that. So uh, where is it gone? I can't see it just now. I can't, my eyes aren't that brilliant. Where has it gone? Polyrhythm cycles, harmonic polyrhythm cycles. Where are the polyrhythm cycles? There we are. Oh, I've got so many windows open. Let's uh, let's close all except the main window. When close all except main window and make a bit of a start. We start on it. So this is our example, and you can just type in any polyrhythms you like there, one after another, and then they get displayed one after another as rhythms along the bottom there. And then you can see it does two of each because we've chosen to repeat each measure twice. And 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 then each one is highlighted as it's played. So that. That only really works for that one, yeah, and, you know, you, but you can make any rhythms you like there. They don't have to be polyrhythms. You can do something, you know, you can do something like 4 plus 3 plus 5. And this is 4 is short, short for 4 for 4. Remember I talked a little bit earlier in a previous, you might remember, that I talked about how you can make these rhythms in this notation up here with a tempo dial options window and you step through step th it's the same kind of idea as that so yeah this this gets automatically synchronized by this by the way so if now I make that rhythm then that changed it changes the same way so now that's four four three four five four one after another so if you want your additive rhythms displayed like that and you can play and it also you want to have them played several times for each one then even if you're not wanting to do a cycle of polyrhythms, this could be a useful thing to know about. Now, the way that works under the hood is that it's actually using a script. Yeah, where's that script? Up there. So you can see this. So just talking about this now, it's I'm just talking a little bit. Of, so I'm going to talk a little bit. You probably throw your you know hands back at this, so you don't need to read this or understand it. But I'm just saying that the that there's a, there's some stuff going on under the hood that if you really really want to you can actually tweak, but most people will just leave as it is, and this is one of them, and this is the script. But if you look at it, it's really quite simple. So you can you have these repeating sections, and that's very much like the repeats in music, and this and it's actually set out very much like music. It's not a proper script. It hasn't got loops and variables and things like that. It's sort of in between. The, the repeating measures that you have in music and, and a proper script. So you can you can repeat and you can see how many times you want to repeat. Then within that repeating section, you say what measure it is, and then you say what tempo you want for each measure. So that's the first measure, the third measure, the fifth measure, the seventh measure. So say, for instance, you wanted this, you, you've got a very simple change you wanted to make there, that you want to play the first rhythm for, say, three times and the second one only once then you can just change that and now if you play it it should do that properly 
So she'll play this one three times, hopefully. And I'll play the next one once. And then the next one, twice. So, so it is sometimes useful to know that this is actually being made as a script. And you could actually do other things there. You could set the instruments you want to play for each each part, each rhythm, for instance, and, and other things. So you can actually edit that script after you've made it. That's that's kind of worth knowing. Sometimes it's worth knowing you can go under the hood like that. And actually, anything that you can do in the user interface, for instance, select adding, selecting rhythms, changing the rhythms for any of the parts, change the tempo and so on, you can actually script it and say that at measure four, you would want that to happen automatically. So you can do that. And some people, there was one user of Bounce Metronome, I think he was a brass instrument player, I think, and he uses the script to script uh, an entire score. And he scripts his part throughout the entire score with all the tempo changes and the rhythms and everything that, he's, that he has in his score. Uh, he makes a script for it and then he follows the bouncing balls for it. So a, a few users do get very into actually using these scripts, but most users don't, don't, don't use it at all. Now, uh, so another thing you have is that the uh, is the custom uh, is the custom beats per measure, and this is going on behind the scene. Now, this you will find is going on behind the scene with the additive rhythms. So let's have a look at those now. So uh, yeah. Those will do fine. The, the other ones also have scripts as well, have, have beats per measure as well. So you see, it says part one, three plus two plus three, and part two, it's set this, this jump three chord S3 is what makes it all work as it is because they're all skipped and put together as a single beat, and that's that's what that's to do with that. So, so that's that does affect it, this affects the it mainly it affects how you count the beats. So that three plus two plus three. So if I change that to three plus, say, now this might actually change the rhythm quite a bit. Four plus two. And notice how it's now counting it as one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, which is um, one. Oh, three plus four, how many beats have we got? We've got eight. I three plus one, yeah, just one. So it's counting one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. So if you want to do that sort of thing, you can edit up there. Uh, I, I can most of the time, you know, it, the counting system it comes up with is just what you want anyway. So you know, it's not so very often that users want to do that, but you might, you can do. And this is also used for making the polymeters. So if you have a look and see, you make a polymeter, you can have a look and you can see how that works for that as well. So I'm just mentioning that. It's under the hood, and I imagine that very few people will, will use that, maybe less so even than the script, but that is actually how it's doing some of its stuff. And so I think that's probably most of what I wanted to talk about. See if there's anything else. I think I'm going back to the, the pro metronome, see if there's anything else here that I want to talk that's to do with rhythms. Oh yes, the drum machine. I had completely forgotten to mention the drum machine, although I did cover that briefly in one of my other videos. So if you have make or remake drum machine, and let's bring up the music notation, although it's not going to be too informative. So there's your drum machine, and it's it's showing all those parts as if there's nothing there in any of them, so they just they just all all tied together as a single single thing. But now if you start putting a few notes in, you'll get some music notation appearing there. And then if in, in the drum machine, if we can then set set that maybe you decide that you want to do, do it as eight notes all the way through, then you can do it like that. And then you can, you can then do and just change the notation like that. Now, where this gets quite fun if you're into polyrhythms is you can now combine a second rhythm. Now, this second rhythm, and so make or remake drum machine, I'm not auto remaking it at the moment, so. You can add a second one, but where it gets really quite fun is so you make this second one. So, well, I have actually made it a little bit polyrhythmic because the first one is four beats to a measure, and the second one is three beats to a measure. So, if you now start clicking a few beats, you know, on there and there, you can make these polyrhythms where these are, are, are and let's 
that's uh, we can have these polyrhythmic drum machine thingies. So you know, click a few things there, and and then up here, you, let's set it to even to beat six, sixteen notes. Maybe that'll so so you can do that sort of thing as well. And um, I don't suppose it's terribly interesting, but here's our rhythm. Here's our rhythm with these combining polyrhythmically in a drum machine. So these are beats with three beats to measure, and these are and these have got four beats to measure. And you can also, if you're really into it, you can also do have something like you could have say five measures, each of three, and make a remake drum machine, and it. Uh, has a tendency to lose some of the beats when you do this. It, so it, it tries to preserve them as much as possible. So it preserved the top one because the rhythm hadn't changed, but it changed the bottom one, I think. Anyway, uh, so anyway, so that's your polyrhythmic drum machine. We can also have the, the, the measures also polyrhythmic. So the measures, the measures, so you've got five measures there in the place of four measures there. And then each of those measures has got three beats to it. So that's quite fun, kind of polyrhythmic drum machine. And uh, at one one of the things that I get asked from time to time is, can I add uh, drum tabs to it? Well, this drum machine is the closest that I've got to drum pads, at the, drum tabs at the moment. At some point, I might automate getting turning drum pad tabs into drum machine uh, drum machine rhythms, but I haven't done that yet. So. So that's the drum machine. Now, anything else we can have a look at? I talked about Euclidean rhythms. Well, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. I talked about the rhythms. I have talked about that. That that was the one that remember I talked about stepping through the rhythms. You know, the one, the cycles of rhythms. You ought to also have a polyrhythm morph, which lets you morph from one polyrhythm to another to a whole sequence of intermediate polyrhythms. So it starts off at a three, uh, a three-two polyrhythm, and then gradually by the end of it. It's playing an eight-five polyrhythm, apparently. So, uh, and that, oh yes, in the middle it's playing an eight-five, and then it goes back to a three-two at the end. I thought it didn't look like an eight-five at the end. So you've got those polyrhythm morphs. Uh, but you've also got up here, you've got a Fibonacci rhythm. So, uh, oh, I think I better keep that to. If I if if I start talking about the Fibonacci rhythms, I think that would be a separate video. I, I don't think I'll talk about this just now, but. Uh, Suffice it to say that well, it's like, well, I can say a little bit about it. Yeah, let's just make one. It's a rhythm that when there's no pattern that repeats exactly all the way through the rhythm. And this is just uh, this is just quite a small one, but you can make one with with rather more beats, rather longer than that, because I, this is just a small section of a rhythm that goes on and on and on forever, and it never repeats exactly. So there are no repeating measures. So in most music, you have a measure. You have some notion of a measure in a Fibonacci rhythm. You don't have any notion of a measure. It's another way of it's a more a kind of a kind of hierarchical way of organising it, where each beat is is combined from other beats, combined from others, and smaller and smaller sections. So it's a kind of tree pattern, a kind of fractal fractal pattern of the way the rhythms are combined together. Uh, but this is because it's within bounce metronome. You you only have fragments of Fibonacci rhythms. If you wanted to do the proper thing. Then you need you're going on and on and never and going on forever. Then you you need tunesmithy, but in bounce metronome it's all got to fit in with this music notation and the polyrhythms and stuff. And so and so it, you you it's you can't play all of the bounce metronome music. And that, so there's our Fibonacci rhythm in uh, in music notation. But then. Uh, so you can't play all the tunesmithy rhythms here. You can't play the fractal rhythms that could go on and on forever, because bounce metronome is all set around this idea of measures and and you know, certain numbers of measures and so on. But you do have these. Uh, I've already talked about the rhythm phasing, and you do have the the golden ratio and the pi thing as well. So these are quite way out rhythms as well. And so the idea here, yes. Yeah, so I haven't talked about these at all yet. I don't think. So with these. The idea is that the that the that the measure beat or that the beats never 
coincide with the measure beat. So you've got a, a beat that is, if a beat is length one, then the measure is length to the golden ratio, which can't be uh, written as a pure fraction. So that means that the, that the beats are never going to coincide with the measure beat, except at the very beginning. It's a kind of strange idea of measure, perhaps, but so, and there's the measure, you see, and it, the beats are never going to hit the measure again. It's sort of quite a bit like rhythm phasing, but you can write as a time signature with the uh, with with golden ratio over four, and then and then that and then so that's golden ratio many beats, and the beats are quarter notes, and this is what you would, and this is what you would get. Because the the measure is at the golden ratio, and then I have got this other one, and this is let's just talk very briefly about this. So this is the idea that when when we were combining measures rhythms together before we did we we did kind of very sensible stuff where all where was you know, very commonplace with always having multiples of, of four and eight and sixteen for the note value, but what happens if you were to make the note value say three? Or five or seven. So Brian Fernihow, that's his notation for this. Uh, so a composer was very into really complex kind of polyrhythmic things, and then so the two rather disparate groups of people who would, might be very keen on this particular thing. So first of all, for some reason, musicians who are really into death metal, and uh, particularly into what's it called? I've forgotten its name now. Oh, it's a funny name. Uh, Gent. D-J-E-N-T. So it's a particular branch of death metal called Gent. And they and they are very keen into very complex rhythms. And I've had quite a few musicians of this genre of music who, who emailed me saying, oh, how wonderful that you to find a, 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 a program that can make these rhythms. And then you've also got the Brian Fernihow complex kind of rhythms as well. So for both these types of musician, then this is, uh, this is very, very, very keen on this. So... So that's the uh, idea. The both parts are playing 4-4 four, four here, but the beats... So it's not like a polymeter where the beats are the same. So the beats are different sizes because, the, because of this 4 over... Well, now wait a minute. If I do that properly, 4 over 3. Beats are different sizes. So it's really it's playing a 4-3... That's 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 play it a bit more slowly. Together, one, two, three, four, one, two. So it's coming together on the first one of that. So it's the four of that. It's only three of that, right? So we're both playing four four, but it's come together every third beat of this rhythm. And and you can do so you can do all sorts of things like that here, so 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 that so you you can, you can four over five. There's lots of presets, so three over five to two over three is a somewhat wilder one. Where it's coming together at a different place each time, so it comes in on the one. on the three. So it's coming together on the one of that comes together with the three on that. And then on the two. And so so anyway, anyway I've, I've, I think I've talked talked enough about all, all this. Is there anything else that that to just talk about quickly? Uh, I think I think I'll just I'll, I'll stop at this point. I could I could, I'm sure there are many other things I could talk about. But I do uh, there may be some things that have interested you when I was talking about all this that you'd like to follow up. So if there's anything you'd like me to talk about in more detail, then do say. If there's some rhythm that you'd like to be able to do and you can't quite figure out, and anything like that. And, and I'm, I'm really getting into doing these videos now, so I can do lots more videos about any of this. Uh, thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed it.